I want to read a passage of Scripture that I believe is increasing uh, and giving uh, great hope in this time of a revival launch, a launch of, of kingdom activity like we have not seen. And I've been talking about that uh, on Sunday morning, and I'll talk about it again uh, from a different angle this week. But 2 Corinthians chapter number 3, verse number 13 is where I'll start. We're not like Moses who used a veil to hide the glory to keep the Israelites from staring at him as it faded away. Remember, he came down off the mountain, being in the presence of the Lord, and the glory was on him so bright that his face was lit with the glory. Their minds were closed and hardened, for even to this day that same veil comes over their minds when they, when they hear the words of the former covenant. The veil has not yet been lifted from them, but for, uh, excuse me, for it is only el eliminated when one is joined to the Messiah. So until now, whenever the Old Testament is being read, the same blinding comes over their hearts. But the moment one turns to the Lord, the moment one turns to the Lord with an open heart, the veil is lifted and they see. Of course, that's a spiritual seeing. You see in the spirit realm, the veil is lifted and they see. Now, the Lord I'm referring to is Holy Spirit. And wherever he is Lord, there is freedom. We can all draw close to him with the veil removed from our faces. And with no veil, we all become like mirrors who brightly reflect the glory of the Lord Jesus. We are being transformed into his very image as we move from, from one brighter level of glory to another. In this great season, we are moving to another level of brighter glory. The, the glorious realms of Holy Spirit that has been poured out since Pentecost, they do not diminish, they increase. And in this revival era, greater levels of brighter glory are going to are going to rise higher, higher, a greater level, a greater level, a greater level, a greater level. They're not going to stop. And in these greater levels of glory, amazing things are going to begin to happen. The voice of the Lord will become clear in Revelation. Uh, there will be a release of kingdom activity where miracles and signs and wonders are, are concerned. Healings are going to come and, and uh, manifest. If you have not been seeing the Sunday morning service, I've talked about this twice, but I had, I had this dream three times of how people were being healed in the glory. During, during our service, just while I'm teaching or the worship's going on, and I had that dream three times that people are just getting healed. And we're getting testimonies of that. And uh, that is going to increase more and more as the body of Christ worships the king, teaches and preaches, declares his word. People are going to start being healed in the glory. Now, of course, we are to steward that. We are to pray that. I've been praying it. And now on Wednesday nights, I want us to pray it. We come into agreement tonight that whenever the body of Christ gathers, spontaneity, supernatural spontaneity of the Holy Spirit's power is going to heal. It's going to open blind eyes. It's going to heal cancers. Healing power is going to be released. And uh, so I want to agree with that tonight. Also, in this supernatural realm of manifested greater glory, a drawing of prodigals back to Father is going to happen. 
And we have been talking about that on Sunday morning as well. We're going to pray that again tonight. That the prodigals will be drawn to this manifest presence of God. Man has a void inside of them. It happened at the fall. And that void can only be filled by God. And that void is, is, uh, is being manifest in our world in all kinds of different ways. But a hunger for God is now being, is being demonstrated. People are hungering for that presence. Fill that void inside of me. And we're going to pray that tonight. Also, the outpourings are going to increase in this greater glory. More outpourings. Outpouring after outpourings. And remember one of the definitions of outpourings that I talked about Sunday morning. And if you didn't hear that, you can go online and hear it is God hugs his people. He's hugging prodigals right now. He's hu hugging new converts, and he's hugging his family. And we can come to him at any time, Jesus said, and get a fresh hug from our God. This revival, I believe, is going to be seen now manifesting in three very clear ways, three phases. First, evangelists are going to arise and begin to declare the gospel of the kingdom in ways that we have not seen before and in a boldness that has not been seen before. This will reach the ears of prodigals and that will be the second phase as millions of prodigals come home and we're going to need them because the prodigals, they, uh, they've been in father's house. They understand some of his ways. They understand biblical understanding. And they can be plugged in in service of the kingdom very quickly. They can be restored as the picture of the prodigal son. He restored him. Um, he restored him when he came back to begin to work with him. These prodigals can be restored to work very quickly. Some of the prodigals are, are actually five-fold ministers that have drifted away, but they can, they can come back and God can restore them. And then, of course, the third phase along with that is uh, in this greater glory level is new converts. People that have never, never been to church before are going to come to Christ. People that are just uh, what we would say uh, are, are lost without any understanding, any idea, really, of Christianity. But they're being drawn, and they're going to be drawn. The prophets tell us a billion-soul harvest is going to be drawn. And so we want to pray about that, and we will in just a moment. Also, in our world right now, we need to be watchmen and pray concerning the banking situation. Our leaders have done a very bad job of leading us and it's causing trauma and uh, the banking situation we don't want it to get out of hand and uh, that would cause a lot of hurt for a lot of people and we're hearing the rumblings of that we've had the banks shut down and the only people that I know of that's going to pray about it is people like you and me and we're going to pray there's a lot of people that are hoping something happens we're doing more than hope. We're asking God to intervene. We're asking to raise up leaders that have some sense and that will lead us properly and it will stop the, the foolishness that's taking place and the trillions of overspending that is putting us into this mess and that those leaders will be taken away and good leaders will rise in their place to make very wise decisions right now. We need... We need people anointed uh, to make right decisions, leaders to be anointed to make right decisions. So we want to pray for that. Also, the rumblings are still continuing in uh, Ukraine with Russia and now China threatening to join in with that. North Korea is also threatening some things. And uh, the world's a tinderbox because of poor leadership. And we, the people of God, must pray for supernatural intervention to come and for a change in poor leadership 
um, and bringing forth good leadership. Right now, in history, if you study it, a lot of the crisis situations throughout history, as, as they were turned, you begin to see a great leader begin to rise. And uh, the leadership begin to change. People of heart, courage, and, and uh, uh, that would not be intimidated. They rose to the occasion. And we need people that will rise to the occasion uh, in our nation and world. So please agree with me. We'll pray for the summit. We're going to pray as the Holy Spirit leads now. You pray. Pray for prodigals. Maybe you know some that you want to pray about tonight. Pray for new converts. But let's, uh, let's allow Holy Spirit to pray through us tonight. Father, we thank you that we have the privilege to talk to you. You said we come boldly to the throne of grace and find help in the time of need. We don't crawl there. We, we're not intimidated to come into your presence. We are welcomed there because we are sons, because we are daughters. And you said come anytime and come boldly and make your request. We do that tonight by the thousands around this nation and world to make a request of you for supernatural intervention, to decree our faith and confidence in what you have promised us. We pray, Lord, that the manifest glory, intensity of glory will go to another level. Glory to glory, you said. Take it all to a very, uh, a much higher level than we've ever seen. And in that glory, Lord, I pray that as your people, as your ministers, as we worship you and as we teach your word, healings will begin to happen. Here at the Oasis, yes, but in all ecclesias around this nation and around the world. As, as congregations gather, let the glory rise to a new level. And out of that glory, surges of healings and miracles sponta uh, spontaneously take place. We're declare, declaring, Lord, they're going to happen everywhere in numbers like have never been seen because where your glory and your presence is, there is also uh, the amping up of the essence of who you are and the covenant that you have made with us. And a part of that is healing. And so we pray, Lord, that that would manifest at levels never seen before in all of history. That's a bold ask. But you're a big God, and we're asking for it in Jesus' name. Continue to call and draw the prodigals. Draw them in from around this planet by the millions, Lord. We, we will steward their coming and restore them uh, in service of your kingdom as you lead and guide us, as your ecclesia is led and guided by you. We pray, God, for sons and daughters that have drifted, aunts, uncles, grandparents, parents, friends, loved ones all around us, that the wooing of the Holy Spirit, the conviction of the Holy Spirit would lovingly draw them, that, that they would long to be back in your presence, long to be back in your house, long to be back in your embrace. Hug them, Lord, we pray. The new converts as well. Those that have no idea, they weren't raised in church. They don't really understand the message of the gospel. But let the evangelists rise. Let a boldness come to the kingdom message and draw them in, Lord. We declare it is harvest season. It is a, it is a season like no other season prepared by you. Help us to teach it, help us to pray it, help us to work in it in Jesus' name. We pray, God, for the summit that is before us. You have led us to do these and you've said, gather the ecclesia together. That's not just this house, it's many. There are so many sons and daughters all around this region that faithfully serve you and they need to be fed, they need to be encouraged, they need to hear your present word. And we have done that, Lord, uh, bringing, uh, bringing these ec ecclesia hubs together with, 
with men and women that uh, are able to declare the present word of the Lord. And we pray, Lord, that your word would be clear. Lord, I pray for uh, Kent that, Lord, you would speak to him, that you would encourage his heart, that you would fill him with a word. I pray, God, that you would set him on fire with a glory-filled word for our times. We need it. And I pray, God, that inspiration will come to this ecclesia and to all ecclesias. That inspiration will come into the hearts of your people. Indeed, Lord, may that night be a night when you hug your people with your glorious presence in a very special way. Not just in this house, but in wherever it goes. Wherever the, uh, the message goes to. Hundreds of ecclesias. Hundreds of houses that are watching. Thousands of people. Hug them, Lord. May this be a supernatural night. We pray that. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. You're welcome to, to do what you want. We invite the angels that you have assigned to us to minister and to amplify our voice. And of course, we bind the work of hell. You will not stop anything. The adversary is bound from any hindrance whatsoever. We declare an open heaven over this house, an open heaven over this region, and an open heaven to declare the word of the Lord. This summit will go to another level in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for the banking situation in our nation. Uh, we ask God that you would raise up leaders that will make wise choices, that you would reveal very clearly those that have made poor ones and eliminate them, get them away uh, from, uh, uh, from leadership. Give us new leaders. We see again the ineptitude of many of our nation's leaders that have promoted a, a godless agenda. And it is, it is frustrating, but it also, it also Lord, it is, it is harming the lives of people from interest rates, inflation. It just is across the board. But we believe that you, even in times of crisis, can raise up leaders with a clear voice smart words, great ideas, great methods, and we would call them forth in Jesus' name. Let your church be strong and declare the truth, uh, truth, but also let that be done in all the mountains of the society and the culture. We pray, God, that whatever the activity is of darkness that is meant for harm, you would turn that around in Jesus' name. And we believe that reformation and transformation will come in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, for the revival that is still going on on our colleges, our nation's colleges, and with our coming generation. It is awesome, Lord. You are up to so many great things. Fuel that fire. Let great young leaders rise, Lord. Those that have a passion for you and will declare exactly what you say, from your word. Let the passionate worship that you have ordained for this time go to a different level. Holy Spirit, raise up the psalmist, raise up the evangelists, the pastors, teachers from that coming generation. Continue your work in the high schools and junior schools and let the revival, the Joel outpouring that has been prophesied go to a different level. And we declare all of this in Jesus' name tonight. I pray for those that, that have been praying with me for the last three years or so now. Would you encourage them tonight? I pray, God, that they would experience your love. I pray that you would hug them tonight. Lord, sometimes when intercession and, and prayer is extended, we just need a time when your presence refreshes us. And I pray that for this prayer night as well. Refresh your people. Refresh the intercessors. Revive their heart. Encourage them. And let them see the answers of, of prayer 
they have been decreeing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I want to declare into, um, into what has happened the last few days in our nation where the banking situation and some of that um, that has occurred has taken place. What we decree, uh, declare and decree is what God says. And in the angel book, uh, the first angel armies book, here are some decrees that I believe will just declare into the face of whatever the adversary is wanting to use to cause harm and hurt people financially. We decree the windows of heaven are open over us, just like God's word says. Now, where, where God's word is concerned, what's happening in the natural realm does not have to affect what we are experienced. We have a greater covenant. And we declare the windows of heaven are open over your sons and your daughters and over your churches. Blessings are coming upon us and overtaking us. Bonuses are coming. Checks in the mail. Deals, great deals are coming to us because you're opening the doors. Inheritance will find us. Stocks and bonds will be blessed and blessed and blessed. Property value will not decrease. It will accelerate. We decree the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just, just like your word says. We decree release prosperity now. In Jesus' name, we bind lack and we loose abundance. We bind poverty and we loose plenty. We bind neediness, we loose finances. We bind poor living and loose success. We have, you have ordained us to bear fruit. We will bear fruit. We decree we are a fruitful people. We're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the country, we're blessed everywhere we go. We're blessed coming in, we're blessed going out. The Lord commands his blessings upon us as Deuteronomy 28 tells us. God blesses the works of our hands. He makes us plenteous in goods. He opens his good treasure over us and rains it down upon us. Angels sent to connect us to covenant prosperity be loosed in Jesus' name. We declare these things in the name of our King Jesus, and we believe the word of the Lord will accomplish its work in our lives. In Jesus' name. Well, keep praying, keep decreeing with me, keep believing what God says, and we'll talk to you more Sunday morning. Bless you.